Math 99, and we are going to look at section 3.7, which is inverse functions, and basically this idea of doing and undoing. So if you'll notice, I have two equations here, uh, c equals 5 ninths times the quantity f minus 32, and f equals 9 fifths c plus 32. These are equations that we can use to convert Celsius to Fahrenheit and Fahrenheit to Celsius. So for example, if I say uh, I'm at 50 degrees Fahrenheit, what is that in Celsius? And I know that there's lots of little, uh, you know, ways to do it that give you a pretty good estimate. This is how we can get it exactly. So when F is 50, I'm going to plug that in. I have uh, 5 ninths times 50 minus 32. So 50 minus 13, uh, 32 is 18. 5 ninths times 18, let's see, 9 goes into 18 twice, is 10. So that should be uh, about 10 degrees Celsius. Right, interesting. And that makes sense to me because this is higher than freezing, this is higher than freezing. Um, but here's, let's do this. Let's plug this into this one that should convert Celsius to Fahrenheit. And what we should do is we should get 50 degrees back. So Fahrenheit is 9 fifths times 10 plus 32. So five goes into 10 two times, that gives me an 18. 18 plus 32 is 50. Notice that this equation converted Fahrenheit to Celsius. This equation undid that by converting Celsius to Fahrenheit. These two equations are inverses of each other. They undo each other. And you can kind of see the pieces in here. 50 minus 13, there's my 18. Um, and then times 5 ninths gives me my 10. And notice when I plug the 10 in, times 9 fifths, that gives me my 18. Add 32, I get my 50. Doing and undoing. This is... Um, these are functions that are that are inverses. They undo each other. So I'm claiming, and this is the notation, I could call this first function f of x, and this next function f inverse of x. So notice this notation right here. This is, uh, this is key. This does not mean like to the negative first power when it's written as a function. What it means is the inverse. This is the thing that undoes that. And now the way that I could check is this. F of F inverse of X should equal X. And F inverse of F of X should, should equal X as well. Here's what I'm saying. If I take this and plug it into that, it should simplify to X. Because notice, I'm putting X into here, getting an answer. Putting that into here, I'm getting X back. It's undoing it. So let me do that. So 5 ninths times... This is going to take the place of that input, 9 fifths x plus 32 minus 32. So notice this just got input into that x spot. And now if I simplify this, 32 minus 32 is 0. So I have 5 ninths times 9 fifths. Well, that's a 1, that's a 1. That's an x. So it works that direction. And now if I go the other direction, I'm going to check it both ways. I'm going to plug this one into there. So notice I have 9 fifths times some input uh, plus 32. And my input is this whole thing, 5 ninths x minus 32. Right? This has taken the place of that x. And uh, 9 fifths times 5 ninths is 1. I have x minus 32 plus 32. You can just see the layers peel away. I get x back. Those are inverses of each other. So I'm going to check. Are f and g inverses of each other? If they are, f of g of x will equal g of f of x, which will equal x. Plug one into one, it gives me an x. Plug the other into the one, it gives me an x. So f of g of x, that's plugging g into f. That's 3 times 1 third of x. Yeah, that's x. g of f of x, plug f into g. 1 third, 3 times x, that's also x. So yes, we could say that g is f inverse. g undoes f, f undoes g. Here's another one. Uh, are these inverses? Does 1 over x plus 2 undo 1 over x minus 2? Well, let's plug this one into that one and see what happens. I have 1 over, there's my input spot, 
So 1 over x minus 2 plus 2. Let's see. Uh, minus 2 plus 2 is 0. So I have 1 over 1 over x. I have a fraction divided by a fraction. I have 1 divided by 1 over x, which is 1 times x over 1, which is x. So it checks out that way. Let's plug it in the other way. Plug this into this. So 1 over input. Okay, fraction divided by a fraction. That's the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So this just gets flipped. X plus 2 minus 2 equals X. Yeah, they undo each other. So in other words, if I plug a value into here, then plug that answer into there, I get my original value back. So um, if we ended up with something other than X, that would mean they're not inverses. So inputs and outputs on inverses get switched. So notice if h of 6 is 9, here's h. h is like just this machine. And this is saying if I plug in 6, it's going to pop out 9. h inverse is doing it backwards. 9 was the output of here. So what you're doing is you're taking this value and you're shoving it back up in there um, and making this run in reverse. And what does it pop out? Where did it come from? Well, it came from 6. Doing, undoing. So here's a table. And notice f of 60. Uh, I don't have an f of 60. I don't have an input of 60. So this is not resolvable. How about f of 30? Well, f of 30 would be 20. Notice that's doing. 30, f is doing something to 30, changing it into 20. f of 70 is 60. f is doing. If I want to undo f, f inverse of 70, I'm going this direction. I'm being given the output to f. What was the input? That goes this way. f inverse would be 90. All right, f of x is x squared. It feels like f inverse should be the square root of x, right? So let's check this out. f of uh, 5, it's 5 squared, is 25. Okay. Uh, I'm going to call this g. So g of 25, square root of 25 is 5. That gives me 5 back. That seems to work. But what about this? What's f of negative 5? Well, negative 5 squared is also 25. But notice if I plug 25 into this, it gives me positive 5. It doesn't give me the negative 5 back. This is not uh, what's called a one-to-one -one function. And this is true of any even power. In other words, I have some inputs. If I think about my inputs, my outputs, there are just some inputs such that they go to the same output. It's not one-to-one. -one. It only goes uh, one direction. In other words, these two go to that one. Um, graphically, that looks like, like we know that that graph looks like this. Notice that there are two inputs that have the same output. In order to be one-to-one, -one, it can't double back on itself this way. So if it goes like this, it's fine. But if it does something like this, it's no longer one-to-one, -one and you can't invert the whole thing. What you do is you just cut it in half. You find the place where it turns, and then you limit the domain. So you say, like, this happens at 0, 0. So if I limit this to x has to be greater than or equal to 0, notice that I'm just taking this part of the function then. Now I can say this is the inverse of it, because now this is one-to-one. -one. I've, I've limited this so it doesn't have this. All right, we, have, uh, we know the inverse of this already, but I want to see how to find it. So if I have this function, c equals 5 ninths, uh, 5 ninths f minus 32. So notice this is set up so that if I know f, I can plug it in and get c. But what if I know c and I want to get f? I want an equation for it. So right now, f is my input and it's solved for my output. That's good. I'm going to switch it, though. I want C to be my new input, and F is going to be my output, so I can get the inverse of this. So now all I'm going to do is I'm just going to solve it for C, get F all alone. So let's see, C equals 5 ninths F minus 32. Well, I'm going to multiply both sides by 9 fifths. Bob. So now I've got 9 fifths C equals F minus 32. Add 32 to both sides. And now notice C is my input, 
and f is my output. This undoes that. They're inverses. Now, it was nice when I had f and c, and I knew that they had some meaning. Let's say this, I have a function like this, y equals one-third x minus 5. And x is always my input, y is always my output. So if I want to find the inverse of this, I'm literally going to switch the inputs and the outputs. So I'm going to rewrite this as x equals one-third y minus 5. And here's what I like about this. Um, now that I switched the input to the output, these are not equal to each other, right? I'm saying this is the inverse of that. But now I'm going to solve to get the output spot all alone. So I've got this one third, multiply both sides by three. I've got this minus five, so I'll add five to both sides. So y equals three x plus five. This will undo that, where x is inputs and y is outputs. Uh, similarly, if I had something like this, that f of x is just a y. So I'm going to say, just write it like this so that it's like this, just this nice convenient uh, thing for me. So now I'm going to do the inverse, switch x and y. Switch the input. All right, solve away, get y all alone. So I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides. All right, now this one's a little tricky. Um, hmm. Notice I've got y minus 3 here. Now, if I don't like that, I think what I'm going to do is just multiply both sides by it. And now I've got this. So notice that cancels. So I've got 2 equals y minus 3 times x minus 4. Now, I could do a couple things here, but you know, I'm trying to get y all alone. Notice that these two things are multiplied together. How about I just multiply, uh, divide by that? Yeah, I like that. So y minus 3 equals 2 over x minus 4. Add 3 to both sides. All right, uh, here's one more that I want to do. Um, I've got this quadratic function with domain restricted 0 to infinity. Notice we're saying x is greater than or equal to x squared. It's like this. Sketch the inverse of this. So here's what happens. x and y switch. Inputs and outputs switch. So I can just think about a couple of points here. Like this is the point 2, 4. This is the point 1. This is the point 0, 0. If the input and the output switch 2, 4, the inverse of it would be 4, 2. So that would be about here. Still 1, 1, still 0, 0. So this is what the inverse of this should look like. Inverses will reflect across y equals x because inputs and outputs are getting switched. So if I had a graph that looked like this, and I wanted to sketch its inverse, I just make it so it's symmetrical across that line, across that line y equals x. That would be a function, it's inverse. All right, let's find a couple here. Uh, what's the inverse of g of x? Three over x, well, let's see. Y equals three over x. Now the actual inverse, I switch the input and the output. So not equivalent, I'm actually finding the inverse. x equals three over, okay, and I'm gonna solve it for that output spot. So how about I multiply both sides by y, get it out of there. x, y equals 3. And I'm dividing, I'm sorry, I'm solving for y. So divide both sides by x. And I get y equals 3 over x. This is its own inverse. This thing undoes itself. All right, uh, there is some good practice for inverses. Give those a go. Uh, let me know what questions you have. Post them. and. Uh, Let's see how you do.